This is an introductory video for the key physics topic of forces. You may be learning about forces as part of GCSE physics or combined science, or even as part of your Key Stage 3 curriculum. In this video, we're going to define what is meant by a force. We're going to explain what we mean when we say that forces cause objects to accelerate, identify what's meant by contact and non-contact forces, giving examples of each one, explain what's meant by Newton's third law, describe forces as vector quantities and show how we can represent them in pictures using free body diagrams. You've probably been identifying and naming forces since you were in primary school, but can you actually define what a force is? It's a push or a pull that happens when two objects interact, which means they're affecting each other. You might have been told in the past that a force is a push, pull or twist, but a twist is just pushing one side of an object and pulling the other at the same time. So it's not wrong, but it does mean we're repeating ourselves. All forces are measured in a unit called Newtons, and we can show this using a capital N for short. When forces act on objects, they can affect their motion, whether and how they're moving. This may involve changing their speed or their direction. If the object can't move because it's fixed in place, then the force can change its shape instead. All forces in the world can be split into contact and non-contact forces. Contact means touching, so a contact force is one that can only exist if the objects are touching each other. A non-contact force can exist even when objects don't touch each other. That doesn't mean it goes away just because they are touching. You still have a weight, which is caused by gravity, even if you jump out of a plane. So this is an example of a non-contact force. But we don't suddenly start describing weight as a contact force when you're stood on the ground. It can and does exist when you're not touching the Earth, so we always describe it as a non-contact force. We've just named weight as an example of a non-contact force. Weight causes objects to accelerate towards the Earth's surface as a result of its gravitational field. The next video in this series is all about weight and how it's different to mass. There are some other examples of non-contact forces too. Electrostatic force occurs between objects with a positive or negative charge. If you touch a Van de Graaff generator and all your hair stands on end, this is because of the electrostatic repulsion between your negatively charged hair. If you rub a balloon on your hair and stick it to the wall, this is because of the electrostatic attraction between oppositely charged particles. You also know about magnetic force, which allows magnets to attract materials made of iron, cobalt and nickel. The first contact force that most people think of is friction, the force when two objects rub together. Other examples include air resistance, tension and normal contact force. The last one of these you probably won't have heard about if you're not yet studying GCSE physics. Imagine a book resting on a table. You might not think of it as having any forces acting on it, but of course it does. The first of these is its weight, that force that is caused by the Earth's gravitational field pulling it towards it. That weight is pushing down on the table. Now imagine for a second that instead of being on the table, that book was being dropped onto a piece of paper that you were holding. The book would fall straight through because the paper wouldn't be able to support it. But if you drop the book on the table, then it doesn't fall through the table. And the reason for this is that the table is pushing back. The table is exerting an equal and opposite force, and we call this force the normal contact force. It happens because the table deforms ever so slightly and then tries to reform. This is quite hard to visualise, but if you imagine that the table was made of springs, you might be able to get that picture in your head of the springs squashing and then pushing back to support the book. We can explain this using Newton's third law. Now don't panic that you haven't heard of the first and second law yet, they're coming later in the GCSE, but we need the third law right now. And what Newton's third law tells us is that for every force or every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. This means that forces always come in pairs, and when we look at a pair of forces, we see four things. The first is that the forces are always equal in size. So the book is pushing on the table, and the table is pushing back on the book, with a force of the same size. If the forces were different sizes, then the book would either fall through the table, or it would fly into the air, and obviously neither of those things is happening. 
The second thing is that the forces are always the same type. Both objects are pushing on each other. The third thing is that the forces are acting in opposite directions. The weight of the book is pushing down on the table and the table is pushing back up on the book with the normal contact force. And finally, the forces are acting on the other object. So the weight from the book is acting on the table and the table's normal reaction force is acting on the book. In physics, we like to divide quantities into scalar quantities and vector quantities. Scalar quantities don't have a direction. They only have a magnitude, which means a size. So they can be represented by a number. And if I know that number, I can predict what happens next. Vector quantities still have a magnitude and they still have a numerical component, but their direction is important. And if the direction changes, that affects what happens next. If you think about forces, like pushing a box, if I push a box to the right and I push a box to the left, then what happens next is different. The box will move differently. And that tells me that forces are an example of a vector quantity. When it comes to representing forces in diagrams, because force is a vector, I can represent it using arrows. Here's my box, and the box has a downward force acting on it of its weight, and also an upwards force, the normal contact force from whatever it's sat on. Each one of these arrows represents a force of 50 newtons, and I can tell that the forces are the same size because the arrows are the same length, and this will always be the case. The length of the arrow represents the size of the force. Now, quite often, there's no point in us drawing a beautiful diagram of the object that we're working with. This box would be quite easy to draw, but lots of other things would be much more complicated. So we don't bother drawing the whole object, we just do a dot at the centre to represent the centre of mass. This is what we call a free body diagram. The dot represents the entire object and we just don't bother drawing the rest of it. Thank you very much for watching and I hope that was a useful introduction to forces. If you did find this useful then please don't forget to like and subscribe for more GCC physics videos coming soon.